Okay, it's 10, so I think it's safe if we get started. Um, thanks for attending. Uh, it's great to be here in Prague. Uh, my wife and I arrived yesterday. It, we just had a little bit of time to check out the city, and it's beautiful, <laughs> really, really nice. We're happy to be here. And um, yeah, but you're here to listen a little bit about machinery. Um, my name is Mauro Morales. You can find me on Twitter as underscore Mauro Morales. And uh, I am working in the machinery team as a senior Ruby developer uh, for SUSE. And uh, you see Giko here. He might be answering the questions I cannot answer. And um, yeah, uh, let's, let's get started. So to give you a little bit of background about myself, I come from Guatemala but have been living in Europe for the, fast, uh, for the last three, four years, more or less. And uh, I focus mostly on software development, but at the same time, uh, little by little, I have been starting to do more what we start to call now DevOps. I started using a little bit of Puppet, a little bit of Ansible, and all of these tools. And uh, it really caught my attention. It's very attractive, it's very nice. I wouldn't call myself a system administrator, but at the same time, uh, more and more, I am starting to see um, how system administrators have to go through their every day in their job. And that's quite interesting, and that's pretty much what machinery starts uh, to build. Machinery is a tool, it's a command line application for creating descriptions. I'll go talking in depth what, what descriptions mean. And um, it's uh, for Linux systems. And uh, yeah, let's have a look. First of all, can I ask how many of you are working as uh, system administrators, or s even if they are not system administrators, they have to do work of system administrator on your every day? One guy here. Anyone interested in the system administrator world? Cool. Developers? Or more developer kind of work? Cool. So we had a little bit of everything and also DevOps, I feel, because some of you raised your hand uh, as system administration and development. So that's pretty cool. So let me give you a little bit of a joke here and present to you Alfred. So the joke here says, it's from taken from XKCD, and it says, it's a guy calling his boss. Hey, we took hostages, secured the building, and cut the communication lines like you said. Excellent, says the boss. And then he says, but then this guy climbed up the ventilation ducts and walked across broken glass, killing everyone we sent to stop him. And the boss asks, a little bit uh, frustrated, and he rescues the hostages? And then he says, no, he ignored them. He's just, he just reconnected the cables, we cut, uh, the cables we cut, muttering something about uptime. Shit, we're dealing with the sysadmin, he says. And, and uh, this, is, this kind of sysadmin, that's Alfred. Uh, sysadmins are very proud of their work. Sysadmins have to keep their machines running. Sysadmins, they need to start thinking about, you know, now the, nine, the five nines uptime. They have to be, uh, make sure that whatever people did in development, they have to make it run. Um, whatever it's expected from management, so things that uh, needs to stay, whether uptime or in different uh, schedule zones around the world, uh, everything needs to be running smoothly. And that's the life of a system administrator. And that can be complicated, it can be frustrating, but at the same time, it requires a lot of technical excellence. A lot of people are working with big data centers, sometimes we look at them like you see in the picture, these really nice, tidy places. Sometimes you just see it as a virtual environment in your AWS console, and anything is absolutely fine, whatever you're doing. But if you're a system administrator, you probably are doing it, like I said, with technical excellence. And machinery wants to provide this technical excellence as well. We are developing this uh, project using Agile methodologies, and uh, we push code almost every day. Uh, we take care of bugs as fast as possible. We try to talk with the community and make sure that we're bringing what they need 
And uh, we also are asking questions, what is exactly what they need? And uh, to present a little bit about machinery into more detail, it is also modular by design. Machinery is a tool that gives you a set of tools, so it's more like a toolkit that gives you a set of tools, and then you can start using this in different ways. So, for example, you can inspect a system and find out certain information about the system and then export it to a different kind of system. Uh, talking into more detail here, you could have a server running on OpenSUSE 13.1, you inspect it, and you might want to migrate it, so in this case export it into something like a 13.2. And the idea is to make this as smooth as possible and as helpful for the system administrator without having to stop using his normal tools or having to learn something very complicated. Um, so, let me give you a bit of a few examples, because uh, as you can see, these are a lot of tools and we don't have that much time, so I'm just going to give a couple of examples. The first of them is configuration discovery. Let's say it's your first day at job, and you don't know where to get started. They tell you, okay, yeah, just work with this machine. What's inside that machine? You don't know. Machinery can help you with that. You can, let's say that your machine is in 10.0, dot one dot hundred, you can use machinery to say machinery inspect, and then you create something that we call a system description. So now, what is a system description? A system description is a unified way of keeping all the information of your system in one place, plus having metadata about this uh, system. So that means that you can go and, and, and create these sort of snapshots of your servers and uh, get information at any point in time of that server. Let's see how that would look um, from the command line. So we would say machinery inspect, then we will pass uh, an option, dash dash name, we're going to call it base image. This is the final name that, this, the, that the system description will have. And we're also going to pass the option dash dash extract files. That's because you might want to use the files or not. It, it will really depend on what you want to do with the system description. And then we pass the IP. You can see that machinery will start doing a lot of uh, inspecting, da da da, inspecting, da da da. In those cases, uh, this OS, patterns, packages, this is what we call scopes in machinery. And this is a way of smart grouping and allowing us to get information of particular parts of your system. So for example, like I was saying, if it's the first day on the job, you might not even know what kind of OS you are running in that machine. So yes, you could go with your command line and look at it, but you could also use machinery and have it listed there and you can keep track of it. Um, what about packages? Uh, you can also check which version of the packages was installed, uh, the release version, uh, who was the uh, entity releasing it, uh, services, what services were running. Was this machine running a MariaDB? Was it enabled or not? You, can, you get all this information into just one place that you can check out as many times as you want. And how do you check this information? Once you have this system description called base system, you can do the command machinery show, and it will give you all the information that it took out of the system. This will look more or less like this. Machinery show base system. It will give us, for example, here, the, the information inside a system is, of course, plenty. So I'm just showing a little bit of it. And it says uh, operating system. It gives us the name of the operating system, in this case we were running OpenSUSE 13.2, the architecture, that's important, you might be working in a place where they have uh, S390, S X64, 32-bit, whatever you want. Machinery can have a look at that and uh, give you the information. And uh, then packages again. Uh, you can see that, for example, Bash 4.2 was installed in this particular system. If you want a bit of a nicer way of looking at it, whether because you want to filter, for example, or you want to share it to someone else, you can use 
uh, you can pass an HTML option to this same command, and it will give you this website. It will start a server on your system, and it will give this um, website with details that you can use to filter whatever you want, may, may want to see. You have also grouping by the scopes, and um, this, this allows you to start doing a lot of analysis. This week, I was uh, just sharing in uh, LinuxCon in Dublin. There's a big hype on containers, for example. But in order to start containers, in order to migrate your applications to containers, you first need to understand what your application is built on. So if you have, for example, a, a system that um, is a, a virtual machine that is running your entire application, you could easily go inspect this system do the machinery show HTML base system and start having a look. Okay, what is part of my system and what is not? And you can start saying, okay, the database is part of my system. Um, the web application is part of my system. It's based on Apache. All this information, you can have it here and in one place. And the nice thing is that you can uh, do all of this offline completely. And um, you can get information out of the system description to the level of seeing what's inside of a file and downloading it to your machine if you wanted to. So this is perfect because you can, let's say that you created this system description the first day on the job, and then three months have passed, a lot of stuff has happened to that machine. You can go and check again how it was on the first day. And you could check, for example, this is... Uh, it's probably not very readable, but this is, um, I was checking the Etsy password uh, file. You could see there which users were created initially on your system and uh, which bash, uh, which shell they were using, uh, particularly bash most of the time, right? And uh, yeah, that's, that's one use case, a very simple one that machinery will give you, and that's mo most of the time where you want to start. Another example could be configuration management validation. Like I was saying, I started using a lot of Ansible, Puppet, and all of this stuff, it's a lot of fun. It's really nice to have a place where you have the description of all your infrastructure, and then you just start spinning servers all over. That's a lot of fun. But if you have been doing development, and test-driven development in particular, it feels a little bit fuzzy, because you don't have an easy way to tell is this doing the right thing? I mean, how do I test it? For example, Puppet gives you a, an, an easy way to create tests, but using the same tool to test what you're creating also feels uh, like something could go wrong. So you could use machinery for these cases as well. Let's have uh, an example. Let's say that you have a server, and with Ansible, you connect to it, and you install phpMyAdmin. Then, how do you make sure phpMyAdmin was set up? You could use machinery again to do a machinery inspect and create a system description called phpMyAdmin. We already saw how that process goes. And then you could take, for example, that base system that we created at the first uh, example and compare it to the phpMyAdmin system description. You would do this by using the machinery compare command. And this is how that will look. Machinery compare base system to PHP my admin. And it will list you only the things that are different between the two of them. So for example, you can easily see that before you didn't have Apache 2 installed, you didn't have PHP 5 installed, and you didn't have PHP my admin. So you could say, oh, perfect. My Ansible uh, recipe is working. Great. But you could take it a level deeper and, say, and, and go and see the services and say, oh, wait, look, Apache2.service is disabled. OK, so there, that, that's a problem. Your Ansible is doing the right thing as installing it, but maybe you forgot, or maybe something went wrong, and the service is not started. And that's a problem. And you could do these checks with machinery, in order to have a better degree of quality with your um, Ansible recipes or Puppet modules or uh, Chef recipes as well. 
This, of course, also has a HTML view, which will list the exact same information. It will do a full comparison of the two systems that will give you in detail what is different from one to the other. Let's say that you're doing a migration. This could also be a very important information. You can compare what was migrated from one system to the other. You could um, get the specifics. The kernel changed from this number to this number, uh, which could give you an idea of where a problem is coming from. A third example, system comparison. If uh, you have some time working as a system administrator or as a developer, you get to hear this joke very often. People say, oh, it was working on a machine. I don't know why it's, wor it's not working on production. That is something we hear a lot. And it's kind of sad that we're still having this uh, sort of attitude of, I don't know, man. It was working for me, so it's your problem. And DevOps is trying to um, tighten that gap where we were saying, OK, this is my responsibility. From here on is your responsibility. And instead of having that, we are all sharing the responsibility. How could machinery help in such a scenario? Let's say that you have a server, which is your production server, and you have a Vagrant machine, which is where the developer is working uh, on, on doing the new things for your application. You can inspect both of these systems, and you can create different system descriptions for the, both, both of them. We're going to call one the production system description and the other one the development system description. And then with the command that I showed you previously, we can easily say, OK, machinery, compare what's different between production and development. And we can easily start seeing, oh, you see, your Ruby version was 1.8. And in production, we have 1.9. And that's where the things are, are starting to get uh, complicated. So machinery is giving you different, like I was saying, different tools for the day-to-day -day job that a system administrator might have. Uh, but the system administrator also has this new challenges, introducing new technology. And that's what I was talking before about containers. Like I was uh, mentioning, in, in Dublin, they were talking about containers a lot. I would say at least like 40% of the talks were centered into container information. And uh, one interesting fact about what happened there was that there, there was a panel in which the people from Docker and the people from CoreOS were sitting down, and one question from the public came. And they said, what about container introspection? And it was funny to see that they don't have an answer for this yet. So if we don't have container introspection, how do we know that our containers are doing what we want them to do? Again, machinery could help you with that. Machinery has a tool that allows you to inspect uh, Docker containers. It's just as easy as the previous one. The command is a little bit different. Let's say you have a Docker image that contains MariaDB. Then from this, we're going to do machinery inspect container. And we're going to create a MariaDB container system description. In the end, all of these containers are just Linux, right? So it will look very similar with the small differences that, um, for example, if we then do the system description machinery show, we're going to see that things start getting smaller. And of course, that's the idea of a container, that it's small. But for example, most of containers don't even come with services. So you will see that. Services are not there by design. You could still create it. You could still install system D or something else and have them. Machinery, if you, if you install them, machinery will have a look at them. If you don't have it, machinery won't crash. It will show you, OK, these are the only few things that you have there, just OS and packages, for example, or whatever else you might have. But where, where it gets interesting is that, let's say that you, have a system, you created a system description for your MariaDB virtual machine, something that is running in production or that you're giving your developers to test. And you can compare that to your container. And you can start understanding what is the difference between, between 
a virtual machine and a container. What are the things that the container is not having in there? What, what, what is the, all the stuff that they stripped out of a container? What are the things that you don't need? And this is important because many containers might not be created for the distribution that you're using. So if you have a way to compare them, then you can start easily saying, oh, this is how I would do it in my distribution. Uh, or, oh, okay, now I understand. This is the MariaDB virtual machine, but if you take all of this out, that's just the important part which belongs to MariaDB 100%. We had this particular issue, and that's how we came up with this tool. Um, we were creating different containers uh, from different things we, thought, we saw in the Docker Hub, but they were not ready for... Um, OpenSUSE 13.2, for example. So we started creating these containers and started comparing them to start to see, OK, we're going the right way or we're going the wrong way. Perfect. Uh, I don't have much time, and I would like to see if you also have questions, but let me just quickly share Machinery. This is the website, Machinery Project. Um, you could also have a look here. We have our GitHub project. Please come. Put issues, questions, whatever you want. We're there. Uh, the team is small, so we have the time to go and talk to you. We're happy to share with you. If you don't know how to do something, we would love to, to check out how we can do it together. And with that, I just want to say, oh, yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, please, let's do so right now. Um, <clears throat> thank you for a great talk. And I have one Thanks. question. Uh, can I inspect uh, another Unix system with machinery, for example, Solaris or whatever? Not yet. Not yet, but uh, everything is open source, and you could start hacking around to use machinery on a different system. I know that's not the best answer to give because you would have to do the work. But uh, we're looking forward. We're trying to cover as many distros at least as possible. Right now, our focus has been on SUSE, of course, because it's a SUSE product. But uh, we don't want to leave it there. We want to go as far as possible. I've been using it a little bit on OS X and uh, getting some results there, but it's not stable. It's not ready for that. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you for a great presentation. Thanks. I would like to ask uh, whether the machinery uh, requires uh, some kind of agent on target system uh, you are uh, uh, describing uh, or uh, whether it uh, works uh, without it. Great. Thanks for the question. That's a really good question. It's uh, basically how are we inspecting those systems, right? So. Um, Strip down to the bottom is we just SSH into that um, machine. So you need to have SSH access, preferably root access, because we're going to check stuff about the system per se. Um, in some cases, for certain scopes, what we do is we use um, traditional Unix commands. So if you want to check which version of the OS, if you want to check which packages, just RPM, list, and give this information, for example. But then we have uh, what we call um, unmanaged files, which is everything that is not known to the system. So let's say that you have just data in your home directory. We also can grab and get that information. But because it can be so much information, for that case, what we did is we have a binary on Go. And we copy the binary into the target system. And we inspect with, with it the rest of the files. It just makes it much, much faster. And uh, yeah, initially, machinery was taking about seven minutes to check a simple system. And now it's a matter of seconds, basically. So I hope that answers your question. It's basically SSH, traditional Unix commands, and for that particular case, a Go binary. You're welcome. Anyone else? Well, if there are no more questions, feel free. Uh, I'll, I'll hang out 
sorry. <laughs> I'll hang around outside. So if you want to talk to me, please come. Let's talk. I also have uh, my. You can see here that's our mailing list. Write to us, like I was saying, or GitHub. Write to us. My Twitter and my personal email. If you want to talk, please talk. It's going to be interesting for us to have to start a conversation. Thank you. <laughs>